In this video, I want to share five things you should do before you start to play to win more matches. Okay, let's dive into it straight away. Ask yourself the following question. Are you one of these kind of players? The goal of the video is so that you know at the end of it why it is important to come prepared not only in terms of practice or the work you put in prior to your matches or to your practice session but especially on the day itself why it is so important to come in time and to give yourself your body the best chance to win. If you just enter the venue 15-30 minutes before your match starts that's definitely too late. Why is it too little time for you to prepare for your match? Therefore, we also need to understand what the goals are. I assume that your goal is that you want to perform to your highest from the beginning. To be able to do so, you have to be very concentrated and your body has to be ready to go. And to be able to do this, you have to warm up. You have to warm up your mind and your body. What I want to show you right now may look a little bit weird. You might think that people are gonna laugh at you, but maybe you are the one who laughs last. So the first exercise looks very funny because I'm laughing already. How does it work? Very simple. My colleague drops down the ball whenever he calls the even numbers, I have to catch the ball with one hand. Whenever he calls the uneven numbers, I have to catch it with the other hand. The good thing for this exercise is that it warms up the left side and the right side of my brain. So it really helps me to wake up to, for my mind to be really, really sharp and to be fully concentrated when I start my matches. And of course you can also add exercises like juggling. Whatever helps to support your brain and your left side of your brain and the right side of your brain to be fully awake is perfect. And don't mind what other people think about you. It may look funny, it may look weird, but at the end, it could help you to have the edge over them. Since the neck is a lot under stress when we play pool, it's so important for, for it to be warmed up. The same goes for your fingers and for your wrist. Pool is such a delicate sport, so it's so important to warm up there. And also your shoulder. Start with the right shoulder, just some shoulder rotations with your right arm to the front, to the back. You're gonna, maybe you wanna do the same with the left shoulder to the front and also of course to the back. And people may laugh at you, but don't waste any thoughts on this. Just waste energy on warming up, both arms to the front, both arms to the back. And maybe you even try to do something for your left and right brain part and try to rotate the arms in different directions. So once you warmed up your mind and you warmed up your body, the second thing is warm up on the table. But also there, I wanna share some hints and some tips I got from professionals. Only a few of you might be aware of this, but at big tournaments in Europe, especially on the Euro Tour, but also on a state or a national level, it's almost not allowed to warm up regularly on a warm-up table. So you maybe get one rack or a very, very limited amount of time to warm up and to warm up your stroke. So at the Euro Tour, for example, you get one rack. That's about it. And since it's played nine ball, you only have nine balls to warm up. Let me show you what advice I got from a professional on how to use those nine balls most efficiently before I start into the match. 
Since you only got nine ball in this case, but for eight ball or 10 ball or whatever, it's going to be the same process. You maybe want to start out with the break because the break is really telling you a lot of how the table is breaking, how the balls are running. Of course, you only got one try, so you better try to do your best. In this case, I'm just using my regular playing cue just to show you the process of how it should work. So I'm just breaking nine ball right now. And in this case, all the balls are spread open. I'm going to use each of these balls to do something for my preparation for the match. So one of the first things I'm going to do, because this is a shot I'm not feeling comfortable with, is I'm going to do a shot which is played from the rail. It's going to look like this, but that's my start. You can do whatever you want to do and you can have your own uh, process. But in this case, what I would like to do is just to try to pot this ball because this gives me a lot of confidence. So ball one down. And with the next ball, I try to get some feeling for the speed of the table. So in this case, I just put the two ball somewhere like here and I just try to play position on the nine ball. So I just know how the cushions are reacting and if I stroke the ball too soft or too hard. So, and I got the speed pretty much down, so that's okay for the second ball. So the, for the third ball, I usually do some crossover position play. Could look like this. There's the six ball and there's the seven ball. So the only thing I do right now is I'll just try to pot the six ball and play position on the seven. Also, once more to get some feeling of how the pockets react and if I got the speed of the cushions down. And as you recognize, I'm not playing by order. In this case, it's just for me to get a feeling of certain shots. Since the seven ball is lying where it is, it gives me an option to check if my stroke is really straight and if I can get position in this case where I wanna go and that's the four ball. And in this case, I wanna strike the ball pretty hard just to see if my accuracy is there. Yeah, hit the rail a little bit, but still managed. And this leaves me up for a very straight shot. So that would be my next one I would like to attempt. So in this case, I just go down and try to play a firm straight stroke, just to get a feeling for my stroke and how I feel on this day. And I'm also not gonna waste the last balls on the table. So once more, I try to get a feel shot out of this. In this case, that would be a spin shot. So how the cushions are reacting if I wanna play position on the eight, that's very good. And the last two balls remaining on the table, I'm going to use for longer shots. Shots which are usually come up during a match and which are standard balls and I usually try to get a feeling for the day, for the table and for my stroke. So this would be a standard shot. I just leave the three ball here for my next attempt. So now I just try to put a firm stroke here. The last long ball I'm going to use for an angle shot like this, which is also not the easiest one, but I'll try to get some self-confidence when preparing shots like this before a match. And if I can strike them like this one, I feel quite okay. And the last shot is the nine ball, just for me to have a positive feeling at the end. And I put myself in a situation which is not too easy. Either it's gonna be somewhere on the rail, that's one option, but I'd rather try to give myself a proper tester, a situation which usually comes up in a match, could look like this. So I really try to get a feeling for a shot like this. And even if I miss the shot like this, I'm not worried because I still got the ball. So I can give it another try. But it's a good thing to test your stroke and to warm yourself up and to give yourself confidence when it comes to long shots, but also when it comes to cushion and table speed. And of course, if you got the time 
And if you got the possibility and the availability to go to a practice table, use it. Use it wisely. And one tip I got from a professional is that when you start playing, just let your stroke loose at the beginning. It's not so much about accuracy at the beginning. It's about warming your body up. It's about getting loose. It's about getting your joints moving and getting into the groove. And once you started with hitting the balls a little bit harder, maybe not so accurate, you just slow down, pace a little bit down, and then try to play some more accurate shots, some more spin shots, and try to focus a little bit more. We all know how important proper food is, and we all know how important nutrition and especially hydration is. One of the most important things I learned when it comes to hydration and to nutrition is that you don't want to eat too short before you start any matches. Another important thing is that you want to stay hydrated. But you definitely don't want to drink any sodas, Coke, Pepsi and these kind of things because they just push your sugar level very high and then you get tired very, very quickly. The best thing to drink is a mixed drink or apple juice, orange juice and three quarter, fill it up with water. And you can use a bubbly mineral water or still mineral water, whatever you want. You should eat in time before a match. What does in time mean? You know, your body needs time to digest food. So 60, 90 minutes before is great. Drink a lot, maybe go to the toilet before you start your match. And if you're not sure if you can make it through the match because it's a very, very long match, then take a break and eat something. But in this break, you need to eat healthy. And you wanna leave out any of these chocolate bars and sugar bars and everything like this because they have the same effect like sugary drinks. You get pushed very quickly, but you also get down very quickly. Because if you eat a lot of things that are very heavy on your stomach, this definitely won't work out. If you are interested that I share more information about nutrition, hydration and fitness. Because I might know an expert or two which I might bring on the YouTube channel and share those information with you. Let me know, drop your thoughts in the comment section below. If you like this video, please click the like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think about those five topics and how you prepare for matches. I would be really keen to learn more from you. Rest when you play tournaments. Some players need it that they really play permanently on practice tables during their matches just to stay in stroke. If you think about it, this takes a lot of strain on your body, on your concentration and you get tired. If you practice in between matches, keep those practices short, 20, 30, 40 minutes max with breaks in between. As mentioned in Europe, we don't have these chances anyway. In many, many countries, for example in my country, it's even forbidden to practice in between matches on state level and on national level. But if it's possible in your country to practice in between matches, then don't practice too much. I know you get tempted, maybe you're nervous, maybe you want to do it, just you don't lose the stroke. But on the other hand, as mentioned before, it will take something out of you, which you might need in the important match which comes up. Especially when you go deep in a tournament, you will need your energy. So don't burn it, don't waste it too much in the practice sessions in between those matches. Take some naps. Power naps are awesome to boost your concentration and to boost your recovery during tournaments. So if you got the chance, if you're at a hotel, go back to your room and go for a power nap for 15-20 minutes. This is just awesome. This is one of the best and cheapest dopings you can do to your body. And once you woke up again, then you should do the same routines as mentioned earlier in the video. So start to warm up, try to warm up your mind first, and then try to warm up your body again. So repeat this process and believe me, try it out yourself. You will go to the table and you will be a different person. So your performance will definitely be enhanced if you do it that way. 
And the final point for this video is sleep enough. Sleep deprivation is one of the biggest obstacles you have to overcome if you want to stay concentrated. And since pool is all about concentration and skill, of course, having enough sleep and getting enough sleep is super important. I know we all have a life, we all have to work, we all have to sometimes work at night or shifts. That's how it is. But if you have the chance, try to get some rest. If you can organize your life in a way that you can take some sleep, then do it. This well needed shut eye is so important for your concentration and for your performance. And of course, this video just highlighted five important topics you should really focus on before you start playing matches, but it's definitely not the end of the list. I really hope you liked this video. See you in the next one.